Uh, what's one of the things, or if you could sum up Mike Vrabel's coaching style <laughs> in a sentence or two, what would you say it is? Wow. I was expecting right off the bat something about the quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Didn't mean to throw you a curveball. Oh, I mean, I'm glad <laughs> It'd be hard in just two sentences because uh, I think he's passionate um, about people. Um, he's passionate about this football team. There's nothing more important to him than this team other than his family. Um, he's a tremendous leader. Like, he's as good a leader as I've ever been around. Players respect him because he's done it. He holds everyone accountable. He encourages the players to hold the other their teammates accountable. He's all about the team. And it kind of really reflects – and, and kind of the outcomes that we like to get where you got a bunch of guys that play hard, that love football, and and uh, that's how he is. You know, he played hard and he loves football, and uh, guys that play here kind of share the same philosophy. All right, thanks. I'll give you, I'll give you a quarterback question now. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, uh, how much has Ryan progressed from the time that he got here last year to now? It seems like he's really on the same page Last year it was with A.J. He seemed to really get on the same page with him quickly. But in camp, it seems like that's expanded, that he's just as comfortable with John U and with Corey and with Adam as he, as he was with A.J. all throughout. Yeah, you know, he, you know, coming into year two, obviously it helps. You know, you've got some familiarity with the guys you've gone to battle with, and, and a lot of those players are all back. And uh, that certainly helps. And, you know, they maintain those relationships in the offseason as best they could under the circumstances. And, and to come into the same system with the same people it certainly helps Ryan and, and helps his teammates. Thanks. Lennon. Hey, Pat. Um, wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, uh, Trevor Simeon. Uh, I know he's been here just a few days, and, and uh, I guess there's probably some expected rust I uh, wonder if you've seen a, a bit of that and if it's, uh, uh, if it's going away, uh, if, if you feel like you're seeing, uh, you know, improvements on a regular basis. Yeah, Trevor's solid. You know, he, he's, he's started some games in this league and, you know, lived the life as a starter in Denver, <clears throat> in Denver for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, he had the unfortunate injury last year, and I think it was week one. Um, and so, yeah, there's been a lot of downtime, but he's a pro. You know, he's, he's stepped right in here. and We've spent a lot of time meeting together. Um, and he's able to handle a lot of information um, in bulk, in a bulk capacity, and really kind of di is digesting it. He's done a good job of that so far, and he's kind of just stepped in and, and uh, done a good job for us so far. Okay, and then kind of a random follow, but uh, in regards to, to Cole McDonald, um, you know, do you ever stay in touch with a guy like that uh, in, in his situation? And you know, maybe do you think uh, down the line is, is could a uh, you know, a practice squad situation developed for him? Yeah, I've been, I talked to Cole for a long time after he was released, uh, before he left. We had a good conversation. He was in a good place with it. And uh, I haven't talked to him since. Um, and I don't know what happened down the line, you know. Who knows? Um, I just know that um, J-Rod and Braves just always make decisions personnel-wise in the best interest of the team. And, you know, Cole did some good things here, and uh, but we've just moved on from him at this point. Her on. What's up, Coach? Uh, in regards to, to Tannehill, and, uh, you know, you've spent time with him over the, the time that he's been here. How would you say he's progressed as a leader on this team? Yeah, you know, he was – last year when he stepped in, he kind of wanted to perform and not talk as much um, because he was coming in as a backup. And um, now this year he's able to really kind of – you know, really fully be himself as far as that goes, as far as being more vocal and uh, communicating with his teammates um, about what the expectations are on a play or a particular route. Um, so it's really been kind of seamless and it's been good. You know, like I've told you guys before, you want your, you want your coach, your quarterback to be an extension of coach on the field. And, and certainly Ryan kind of fits that bill. And then as a, a guy who, who played receiver before, do you think that's kind of unique and has a lot to do with his ability to, you know, tell these guys, you know, to be more uh, definitive on a route or, or break here or break there? Do you think that's something that's an added plus for him? Yeah, I mean, it couldn't hurt, right? You know, like, uh, 
you know, I, I know I personally was never a receiver, but I, you know, I've thrown a few footballs in my life, but playing receiver and then going on the other side of it, it's got to help, right? You can help identify and uh, with those guys and about spacing and how to, you know, where the feel is working on both sides of it. So, uh, I think it probably has helped them. We haven't talked about that a whole lot. It's a good question for Ryan, though. Eric? Hey, Pat. I wanted to ask you about Logan and, and sort of how he reacted to the signing of Trevor. I'm curious if you've seen that at all light a fire under him. Maybe is there even more urgency than there was before? I'm just curious how he reacted to that and, and uh, just his, his path forward after that. It was pretty much the same, you know. He, he's a real mentally tough guy, you know. Um, like like I've told you guys before, we've challenged him in a lot of ways, and he's always responded well. So I didn't think it affected him at all. Um, but that would be a good question for him. I don't want to speak for him, but it doesn't appear to be uh, any kind of change in him. Cool. Hey, Pat. Um, Wanted to ask you about the the play yesterday with the 17 seconds left on the two minute that was like the Deshaun Watson play from 2018. How do you guys break that down after Ryan kind of holds it too long and throws it and time expires? What's the what's the lesson there? What do you want him to do there? Yeah, well, that was you know that's why you do those you create those situations in practice to kind of to work on them. That was a teaching moment. Um, for all of us. So you try to, uh, Coach Rabel does a great job of putting us in situations that can be tough and random and in practice. And then, you know, if you don't respond exactly the way you should, some of those situations are real tough, then they're great opportunities for learning. And that's the way we look at it. And that was a good opportunity for learning um, for uh, Ryan, all of us. Third year together for you guys, uh, AFC Championship game appearance now going through this pandemic craziness. How, how tight-knit a staff are you guys as a result of, of, of all this? Yeah, I love our staff. I mean, I feel really fortunate to uh, have the guys around me that I do. Like, it's, you know, we have a lot of guys that, that obviously they work hard, but I think there's a lot of trust. Um, we see things, I think, with the same set of eyes um, and we're led by our leader who, you know, is a tremendous leader um, and cares about people. And he's put people in here that, you know, really respect each other. And, uh, you know, we're all kind of the head coaches of our rooms is what Coach Rabel says. And when you give people that kind of responsibility, you tend to, you know, really take that on and, and take it seriously. And uh, we're a collaborative group. Um, and I'm, I feel fortunate to be a part of being around all these guys. They're great guys. Appreciate you. Luke. Hey, Coach, appreciate your time. I was wondering if you'd expound a little bit on maybe your evaluation of Cole McDonald from the first week or so practices. What did you see from him, and what was he able to put out on the field that you saw in the limited time you had? Yeah, you know, he made a lot of significant changes. There were some mechanical things that we wanted to work on, and, and he was real open to that and did a good job of that. Um, there was some progress there, but again, you know, he's not here right now. Um, I really like Cole and, you know, we'll see what happens down the line, but again, all those decisions really, and, you know, are made in the best interest of the team and, um, you know, we'll miss Cole, but we all move on. You all have talked a lot about the competition you like to see really at all positions, but you, you talked about the quarterback position being one of those at the backup spot. Are you, have you so far through camp sort of seen what you want to and what you like in terms of the competition? And I guess now Logan and Trevor being able to bounce off of each other and compete for that spot. Yeah, you always want, you know, competition. You know, our guys compete at everything, like not just on the field. We, we, so we played a little game this morning. They were competing pretty hard. So um, I am pleased with the way they compete, you know, and the expectations of them is high. It's always high, and, and really, they're self-motivated in that manner. You know, it's, it's a good group. It's a good group of three guys here that um, are self-motivated to do to be competitive, and really led by Ryan. Ryan's probably one of the more competitive guys I've ever been around. And uh, so, yeah, I've been pleased so far. 
Kyle? You know, Logan, uh, his first high school coach moved him to running back, so he had to transfer and then beat out a guy there. He goes to Toledo after trying so hard to get people to notice him at, at the college level, and they bring in a guy from Alabama who beats him out twice, and he's the third guy taken on his AAF team, uh, and he's kind of hanging around your guys. His high school coach said he tells him all the time, you're like a bad rash. Uh, you, won't, you, won't, you, won't, you won't go away. How, how has he – how has that rash stuck to you guys? What is it that, that he keeps doing? And what do you see in him, maybe in the experiences he's gone through in the past, having to scratch his way to stick around all these other places uh, that have served him? Yeah, it's made him really mentally tough, which is a trait that you have to have when you play quarterback, really any, any position in the NFL, just playing in the NFL. But as a quarterback, you got to be really mentally tough. There's a lot of different things that come at you, obviously on the field, um, but are hit you from off the field. You know, it's a critical position um, that's criticized, and he's really battled and earned everything he's he's had to get over the years. And um, all those things you said are, you know, kind of make who he is now, which is a, a tough, competitive guy who works extremely hard, um, and now he's put himself in a position to compete, uh, you know, to be our backup, and, you know, the rest remains to be seen. Jim? Hey, Pat, uh, you, you touched on Logan a little bit earlier just about him being mentally tough. I, I mean, how has he been during the course of camp in your mind? And when you do bring somebody else in, I mean, is, does that force a guy to rise to the occasion even more if you don't have to say anything to him? Yeah, I mean, it has to, doesn't phase Logan. You know, that's, that's not his, his makeup, um, and he understands it. Um, and really, you know, it's pro football, so – Things come at you. See it. Things come down with Logan. So um, things come at you. Uh, all right. See you, Trevor. Sorry, guys. Um, he's mentally tough, Jim. Um, I'm not concerned about, you know, when you bring in another guy and how he's going to react. Like, Trevor stepped in the room. He's a really good guy. And like I've told you guys in the past, like, we have a real collaborative room. We work together. We help each other out. Then we go out and we compete. And when we make mistakes, we help each other do something great we compliment each other so and then you know the rest kind of shakes out it's a hard position to play and so uh, it's important to me and important to the guys in our room that we have a real good rapport and collaboration for the good of the team and uh so it's been good and you mentioned about ryan being one of the most competitive guys you've ever been around i mean where, where does that show up i mean you can see it in his emotion but uh is that just little games you do to the side or are there any, yeah. <laughs> everything like he, you know, he doesn't like make mistakes. He doesn't, you know, let them weigh him down. But when he makes a mistake, um, you know, I got to leave him alone for a second because he's a self, he's his harshest critic and he likes to win at everything we do. Um, he's good natured about it, but he doesn't want to win. So um, you can just tell and he's competitive. He wants to win. He, he's driven and cares, and uh, it just kind of shows up in a lot of different things, uh, you know, on a daily basis when you're around someone so much. It just comes up. It's in a good, positive way. Last question, Michael Hogan. Hey, Pat, appreciate your time. Uh, how much do you think uh, two veterans like Ryan and Trevor can help Logan Woodside grow and improve even more? I think whenever you surround yourself uh, with a veter you know, veterans that have been playing and know the game, it only helps. Like I've told you guys before, like we have a lot of dialogues and um, daily uh, philosophically about football and playing a position. And, and uh, we spend a lot of time in here doing that. So it can't hurt, you know, and it really helps that Trevor's like a really good dude. So, um, and I'm glad he's here, you know, glad he's here. Logan's glad he's here, honestly. And so is Ryan's. It's a good room.